great turnout. I'm excited to have you guys here. Welcome. I'm Carrie, by the way, Carrie Fernandez. It's okay. So let's do a little overview kind of of what we're going to go over tonight. Um, so we're going to talk about really staying positive, um, maybe how to keep your teams on track, um, maybe some of the daily things, weekly things. You know, we all do these businesses differently, but, um, you know, just hearing things a different way from other people can be very good when we integrate it into our own businesses. So take the things that you like when you're hearing it tonight and use it in your business. Try it out. See how it goes. Um, you're going to hear a lot of different things. Joan does her business completely different than a lot of other people and look how successful she is. So she's going to give you some really great tips tonight about um, how she integrates Aroma Touch and builds her business through Aroma Touch. Um, she's going to talk about rank advancement and how to get to where you want to be, how to reach your goals. Um, Lori's going to talk about um, basically how to stay connected to your people. Once you get people going, once you get people signed up, it doesn't stop there. That's really just the beginning. So all the different ways that you can actually keep them going with their LRPs, with education and things like that. So we're going to have a fun night tonight and then we're going to have a great raffle afterwards. So, and then hopefully we'll have time for a little bit of questions. Uh, but tonight I'm going to talk about um, building and leading, staying positive, the daily things that you can do to keep your teams going. So I do have a handout that I can, I'll just hand it out at the end. It's going to kind of briefly go over some of the stuff I'm talking about. But basically learn how to present. So this is one of the things that I talk about a lot with when it comes to business. It's also one of my favorite things when I own my ballroom dance studio. My favorite thing was to do teacher training. I love to teach students too, but I love to do teacher training. Um, learn how to present, okay? You can't just do this business one way. If you're at Lunch and Learn, I talked a little bit about that yesterday. But you have, everybody's different. We all reach each person differently, so we have to find what works for each individual. It might be a one-on-one, -on -one, it might be a group, it might be, you know, something like this where there's a whole lot of people, but find what works for you. Use social media, use all the different avenues of social media that you, that you can use. Facebook, Twitter, they're all free, why not use them? Get a website, get a newsletter. I covered a lot of that stuff yesterday if you were at Lunch and Learn, so I'm not gonna repeat all of that. But really just find what works for you. Um, presenting can be, who gets nervous presenting? And I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, yeah, I thought you wouldn't raise your hand. I know there's a lot of you in here that do. And I will tell you, when I first started, I, um, I started at a ballroom dance studio, and my, the owner of the studio asked me what was like my biggest fear. And I said, speaking in front, in front of a big group of people. And he said, okay, well, you're presenting at our next showcase. You're going to be the MC." And I was just like, my jaw just <laughs> And it was not good. <laughs> I will tell you, it was not good. I read from the paper like this the whole entire time. Um, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And for me, I have a two-year-old, so it's really hard for me to do my business one-on-one -on -one all the time. I think it's great when I have the opportunity. So what I personally do is I do a group because I'd rather get five or six people together in a group, find out who's interested, and hopefully I've already, I've already sampled them before they even come to the class. And I'm really good at staying, I know for those of you who are on my team, you know I'm texting you all the time. But I'm pretty good about staying in contact with people, reminding people. You have to stay on top of it all of the time. People forget. And if you're doing it from a helpful standpoint, they appreciate it. I hope. I hope they appreciate it. And they don't feel like they're being bombarded. But people need to be reminded. So once you have the class, I have five or six people. And then whoever enrolls, the next thing I do is I invite them over to give them an aroma touch. I wish I had the time in my life to give everybody interested Aroma Touch right off the bat, but I just don't. So then I'll invite them over for the Aroma Touch. And at that time, I've already had them fill out their IPC sheet. Um, and I suggest for if you're newer and you're starting to sign people up, I would suggest having them fill out that form rather than doing it with them on the computer because it can be really time consuming. And people love time. They don't want you to waste it. So if you're gonna sit there and you're new and you're spending like 25, 30 minutes Signing them up, that's just too much time. So definitely have them fill out the form. You take it home. That way if you need help, you can call whoever signed you up, get help, sign them up, take your time. Um, and also what I do, I actually will sign somebody up. I enter them into the SHARE program. I set up their LRP automatically. Unless they specifically tell me that they're not planning on ordering monthly, I will already set up their LRP for 125 PV. Um, what else do I do? Set their website up with their name or if they told me something otherwise. I usually don't ask them. I usually just set it up with whatever their name is. 
And then when I meet with them for their aroma touch, I will go over first, I'll go over how to, you know, how they place their orders. I'll show them that I set up their LRP. I'll show them how to change it. I'll show them the live chat button if they want to cancel it. So they feel very confident that they can do whatever they want with their account. But at least I'm setting them up for success. I'm setting them up to get the free products because most people, what do they want? They want the free products. They want the points for free products. So I set them up that way. Whatever they choose to do with their accounts after that, it's up to them. But I'm always following up with them. So usually before their first order, I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. I'm in my back office and I'll send them a reminder. Just as, just to be nice. They get one from doTERRA, but it's nice for us to be able to do the same thing for them. Um, and then I'll also send them a reminder sometimes the second month. Not always, but most of the time. Uh, and there's been times where I've caught people's orders like 120 PV instead of 125, and they think they're at the 125. And if that order had gone through, they probably would be pretty upset. I've probably had that happen a couple times. Um, so it actually can be a very helpful tool. You're kind of helping them through the process of getting started. Um, so I think that's really important. So have a system in place that works for you. For me, that's what I do. I have a class, then I do a one-on-one, -on -one, then I talk about, you know, I'll switch their um, you know, products around with them um, as a wellness consult, find out what's best for them. And then I set everything up for them. And that way when they leave, they feel like they have everything they need. I also try very hard to send everybody home with a little bag of tools. Um, the little sample bottles, roller, ball, uh, roller balls. Um, I like to make the, I have it on here somewhere, uh, the little glass eight ounce bottles, the amber bottles. I do like a, like an on guard and lemon, just like an all purpose spray. Who have I given those to in here? Okay. Yeah, my people. I try to give them to everybody because most of the time they're not going to use it, right? Would you guys have used it? Would you have like gone, gone home and made like an all-purpose spray probably right off the bat? But I think it's something that they need to see how to use our oils and they're brand new. So help them out. Give them tools. Like Joan said, be generous. It does pay off in the end. So I just think it's really important to have a structure in place and that's how I do it. I'm just sharing it with you because maybe you might like it and you might want to do the same thing. Um, when you have a class, learn how to teach a good class. It's really important. There's a proper way. I didn't know the proper way in the very beginning. If you hit Elite, or some of you might have hit Elite already, make sure you go to Elite Retreat. It is the best thing you can do to get your business going in the right direction. After I went to Elite Retreat, I was like, oh, okay, this is so simple. And I owned my business before, and I say this all the time, but I did everything myself. I did the books, I did the scheduling, I trained the teachers, I taught, I did everything. And this business, there is a path, just follow it. Don't try to make up your own pathway. Just do what's in front of you because people are already successful with it. People have already done it and failed and, re and they've redone it. So you can actually be successful with it. So um, learn how to engage people in the class. So one thing that I like to do when I'm teaching a regular class, if I have, I try to get all of my people or I, not all of my people, but I try to get just as many people that are not new in the class as new people because it's also good for them to, you know, further their knowledge. But I also can kind of pinpoint like, oh, you know, Brenda, I know when you started, you're, you had a really hard time sleeping and I gave her a rollerball, blah, 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 and I'll explain what it is. And so I'm able to engage each person and say something specific that I know it's not going to bother them and make sure it's not going to be something personal that would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she just said that in front of everybody. But it also, it engages people. It helps people feel like, oh, okay, or maybe you met somebody and you remember their name and they're brand new, use their name while you're in the class. That's a hard one for me, I'm really bad with names. But it's a great thing that you can incorporate into your classes. All right, enroll, kind of already talked about that. Use the IPC sheets, especially if you're new, so you don't take up so much time. And at the end of your classes, you can just take it home and take your time doing them. Um, but be, I put, I put down here, and you'll get the hand up, be a master, uh, learn to master the art of questions to enroll others. So in a minute, I'm gonna play a video Tony Robbins talks about the importance of asking the right question. So we're gonna come back to that in a few minutes. Okay, learn how to close a class. That's the key. You can teach the best class in the world, but if you don't know how to close a class, you're not gonna get people to sign up, even if they wanna sign up. So make sure you know how to close a class. Um, if you go on YouTube, Teresa Harding has how to close a class. That's a great one. Um, Share Success has a great one. Do they still have their launch your business thing. I looked on it the other day to show somebody and I didn't see it, but if they do still have launch your business, where do you know? I've seen it online, so launch your business, sharesuccess.com. Yeah, they have some really great videos.
videos, and they have some really great videos on closing classes too, but I would suggest writing it down and just reading it over and over every day until you can get very comfortable in explaining, you know, explaining what LRP is and how to close your class. Um, that's the key to getting people involved. So, um, well, know how to close a class, know how to sign somebody up quickly, follow up, follow up, follow up. It doesn't end when they enroll. You have to keep following up, otherwise they're probably not gonna order. Or how do you know that they ordered and their, you know, tool, their oils aren't just sitting on a desk collecting dust somewhere. You gotta get them to classes, not one, not two, but all the time. Anytime you teach a class, I would suggest making sure you have a date of your next class or maybe two. Um, if you have a website, get a calendar on it, have your whole month there, so that way people have something to look forward to and they can invite other people to as well. So you gotta keep things going, don't just go one by one. Uh, another thing that I've learned to do is to really value every single person, even if they are on LRP and they only spend $10 a month. It's so great, it is still working towards the same goal. You don't know what they're gonna grow into later anyway. But learn to appreciate each and every person that you have um, under you. Um, so skills to master follow-ups. Know how to do a wellness consult. You're really good at that. <laughs> Next time we'll have you speak at that one. Um, use your live, share, build, lead guides. These are up here. So um, if you're not familiar with these, you need to get very familiar with these. Oops, I'm making a mess. But we'll go over some of that in a little while. Um, develop relationships and keep them going. This is a relationship business. If you don't really like people, this is probably the wrong business for you. So it's about developing relationships and keeping those relationships going. Um, I can't say that enough. So I feel like all of my people, I have sort of, since I sold my business and I started doing this, I've probably created more friends than I've had in a really long time. <laughs> so it's just all about people. It's all about relationships. Um, get a system of how you keep track of your people. That's really important. Hopefully you already have that in place. Uh, if you're brand new, this is the easiest time to get started. We're all different. We all have a different way of, you know, keeping that going. For me, I, I do a lot of it on my computer. I do a lot of it in my newsletters, keeping everything separated so that way I can reach out to the people who are brand new, who have sampled, who have already signed up but they're new, and then the people who want to do the business. I also keep no the, under the notes in my phone, I have several different notes. I have uh, one note of people I'm signing up this month. I'll just, I don't want to look at 100 people all at once, like everybody says, make a list of 100 names. I want to look at the people that I'm going to plan to sign up this month. I want to look at the people that I need following up with. Maybe it's the same people, maybe it's not, but keep lists going. Look at them all, look at them all the time. And the next thing is stay positive. So I think the biggest thing in this business is I've come across so many people that are interested in the business. They have an interest, but they just don't want to do the work to really get to the next level. So it's not a get-rich-quick business. It is a real business, but in the end, it really pays off if you stick with it. Um, I like the idea. Sometimes I'll explain, like you know, setting aside a couple hours, several days a week, if that you know, so you can just specifically do your DoTerra. That doesn't really work for me with the kids. So I just feel like for me, it's a lifestyle. It's what I do every day. I don't really take a day off from it. It's just something that I live and breathe all the time. It is not hard for me to talk to the people about what they should be using with the oils, just like I think everybody should learn to dance. I think at some point in everybody's life, everybody has wanted to learn to dance. Maybe you went to a wedding, had a bad experience, and you're like, oh my gosh, I never want to feel like that again. I feel the same way, just as passionately about the oils. So learning, obviously, education about the oils, you have the right things to say to people, but you also don't have to know everything all at once. So it's a learning process. Get to classes, even if you're by yourself. I think the biggest thing that you can do is just show up. Show up for yourself, learn more, hold your own classes, share with everybody all the time, follow up with everybody, get organized. What else did I miss? Okay, so that is, those are really just kind of the things that I wanted to touch on tonight. Um, it's really gonna help you build a strong team if you can do that. I have these to pass around and if you'll just like, maybe pass those back and I'm gonna pass these over. Just kind of recap some of the stuff that I talked about tonight. I'm gonna to show a seven minute quick little video and then I think Lori's up next. And I just moved here two months ago and I always have issues with this, so. But I think I have figured out how this makes me mad. Everyone's <laughs> 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 
It would be the greatest time you've ever lived if you control what you focus on, if you find a more empowering meaning, and if you decide to model the actions of those who succeeded before you. It could be the best financial time, the best emotional time, the best spiritual time of your life, but you better take control of your state. And if you think you're going to do it just by today, you're wrong. You're going to need to get yourself some rituals. Right now, every one of you in this room is controlled by your rituals. I don't just mean this one. I mean every morning you get up. I know your body. I can look at your body right now, and I can guess your rituals. Some of you, your rituals to work out five times a week. I can see it clearly. Four to six times a week, it's obvious. Because you couldn't look like that if you didn't do that. Some form of workout. I don't care if it's walking, lifting, whatever. Some of you, it's obvious. That lifting weights is part of it. You can see my hands and muscles. I know, I know what his rituals are, because your life comes from your rituals. If you don't develop the ritual, you're kidding yourself. How many of you agree with me on this? Raise your hand and say, I. And there are rituals to put you in state, and there are rituals to take you out of state. You have rituals in your relationship, you have rituals with your body, you have rituals around your finances, and the rituals that worked in the reaping time of fall in the markets and in business and in real estate, those rituals won't work now. If you do the right thing, at the wrong time, you get pain. I'll say that again. If you do the right thing, no one I'm doing the right thing, but I'm not being rewarded. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, you don't get rewarded, you get paid. So you better do the right thing at the right time. And to do that, you better know what season you're in. To do that, you're going to learn how to change your state. How to take control of your own conditioning. That's what I look for. Does this make sense to you? Yes or no? Come on, guys. Yes or no? So now it's time to train yourself to do that. I'll show you how fast it can change. Try this just for a second. I want to show you what you can do with just focus. Try this for a moment. I'm going to give you a test. Sit up in your chair with some energy. Make sure your buddy next to you is in a strong state. If otherwise, adjust their state. I'm not changing this up. What are you going to do? See if they're ticklish. That might help. Now do this. I want you to look around this room right now and find everything in this room that you can find that is brown. As fast as you can. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look around you. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Okay, close your eyes. I'm going to give you a test. With your eyes closed now, shout out loud everything you saw that was red. <laughs> if you see a lot more brown right now than red, say yes. yes. Open your eyes, look for red now. I want you to really look for red. Look for red, look for red, look for red. Anything you find that's red, look for red. All around you, look for red. Raise your hand if you found more red this time and say I. Uh, I. Why did you find more red this time? Because seek and you shall. That's right. Whatever you focus on, you're going to find it. In fact, let me tell you something. You'll even find it when it's not there. How many saw burgundy called it red just so you could have more things you counted? Raise your hand and say, ah, come on. <laughs> See, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. So if you want to change your life, my friends, you've got to change your physiology and you've got to change your focus. By the way, how fast can you change that stuff? How fast, my friends? How fast? How fast? Come on. In a heartbeat, once you rechange your conditioning, that's all you got to do. And you do it fast. You can do it with a question or two. Try this right now. Answer this question in your mind and be honest. What in your life today, if you wanted to be, could you feel proud about right now? If you wanted to feel proud, you can feel like, I shouldn't be proud. If you wanted to feel proud, what could you be proud of in your life today? Your children, your health, your body, is there a problem you face? Instead of running from it, you finally stepped up and handled it. What could you feel proud of in your life today? If you wanted to feel proud. How many can think of something? And when you think about this thing you're proud of, what about that makes you feel proud? What do you focus on?
focus on, it makes you feel proud. How do you breathe when you really start to feel proud? What's the kind of look on your face starts to happen when you let yourself feel proud? Yeah. How's it feel? Hmm. Think of another area of your life. Think of an area of your life that you're grateful for. Or you are not grateful. If you want to be grateful, what's an area you could feel grateful for? What could you feel grateful for if you really wanted to feel grateful? How many can think of something you could feel grateful for? Let me see your hand. And what about that are you grateful for? What do you focus on that makes you feel grateful? How does it feel when you're really, truly feeling filled with gratitude? Here's one. If you wanted to be excited about your life right now, and you were willing to be excited, you were willing to buck everybody else's trend, what could you feel excited about in your life if you wanted to feel excited? What could you get excited about if you really focused on it and you really took it in? You weren't in a negative place. What could you get excited about if you wanted to be excited in your life? What could you get excited about? How many of you can think of something you feel excited about right now? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Say I. Uh, when you're really excited about it, what about that excites you? Or when you're really excited, how do you feel? How do you speak? What's your life like? By the way, when you're excited, does it tend to touch other people? Yes or no? Yeah. Absolutely. By the way, do people have a tendency, but who feels different right now? But just even a couple moments ago, raise your hand and say, ah. Why? <coughs> because focus is controlled by questions. If you ask a different question continuously, not once, continuously, you will get a different answer. If you ask a lousy question, you get a lousy answer and a lousy state. So I say, why does this always happen to me? It doesn't always happen to you, but the brain's like a computer. Ask it a question, you'll have to come up with an answer. Because you deserve it, you idiot. <laughs> Someone will say, how come I can never lose weight? You can't lose weight, but if you keep saying, how come I can never lose weight, the brain's got to come with an answer. It goes, you're a pig. <laughs> Lousy questions, great what? Lousy answers. Ask a better question, get a better answer. Now here's what I want you to get. I want you to get that you can change your state. How fast, guys? How fast? How fast? And if you get the habit of doing it, you'll have a different life. You guys feel excited or what? Yeah. yeah. So you guys just need to get excited. You need to make goals and follow through with them. Decide what you want to do and don't stop. Do it every day. Teach your classes and be happy. It's contagious. If you're happy, like you say, and you're positive and you're asking questions, if you nod your head, most of the time you just find people are nodding their head with you. It's something that you just want to get used to doing. Who, who came and listened to either at Elite Retreat or when Alicia came to speak a couple months ago? Okay, well, she, she constantly does that. She's constantly, and she says, does that make sense? Does that make sense? And she's like in your face, like locking eyes. Like, it's, I'm not saying to scare people, you know? <laughs> Lock eyes for a second and then look away, but be happy, be positive, it's contagious. So go out there, teach your classes, make your goals, and follow through, do it every day. Not teach classes every day, unless you want to, but do something every day. You can do something every day. Okay, so Lori's gonna come up next, and I will tell you, Lori and I met at a solid gold class. Was, Joan, was that the first one and only one that you've had? This is the second solid gold class, and it was a while ago, maybe two years ago ish? About a year and a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know each other, and there was a little exercise where we had to partner up, and Lori and I were partnered up, and I hate being partnered up. <laughs> but now I don't mind, but I just, you know, I was the only one, I didn't know anybody there, but we partnered up, and I will tell you, Lori and I are now good friends, and there's some other people in here that I became friends with that she's formed this little mastermind group. Raise your hand if you're in it. Okay, so I have more friends, right? And woo, and so we've all gotten together, and we sometimes teach classes together. We're not on the same team. You know, everybody in this room are on different teams. I hope tonight you leave here, you make friends, exchange phone numbers, um, start attending each other's classes. We all have something to offer each other. And so utilize that, become friends. It's not about this team or that team. 
we are all on one team together. So, um, Lori, come on up here. Lori is almost gold. Yay! Ooh. She's got some really cool things to talk about today, about how to kind of keep your people going. So I'm going to turn it over to her. And here yeah. you go. Voila. Yay, yay. Okay. So I get the pleasure of talking about my favorite thing. So when Carrie asked if I wanted to talk about it, I just thought, you know what? This is like who I am and what I do. And it's basically how to follow up and um, how to keep relationships going strong. And really in this business, isn't it really all about relationships and keeping them strong? Every single person that we sign up is either a builder, a sharer, or a user, um, or now a customer as we call them. And, um, you know, I basically when I meet people, I meet them exactly the same no matter where they are. If they're a builder, a shearer, or a user. Because when I uh, build a relationship with people, um, it's the same every time. And I'm going to go through a few scenarios of how I um, connect frequently with the builders, how I connect frequently with my sharers, and how I connect frequently with my customers. And for me to maintain a structure, which we all want in this um, business, if you're here, you probably want a structure, because a structure means you're going to get your 50 or 250 or your 1500 uh, bonus. And um, the only way that you will maintain that is by building relationships and keeping them strong. And I have a lot of examples um, of ways that I did not do that well. And then when I had to um, like go to that person to ask them for something, it was really uncomfortable for me. Um, so I'm telling you that now because I don't want that to happen to you. <laughs> so sometimes you'll be like, you know, you might need something from them, like maybe they're putting in a $95 order and you really needed it to be 100. And you're like, oh my God, I call this person they either underordered or they didn't check their PV correctly, and I have to actually call and ask them to put in another five dollars or another order, or I have to have a conversation. And if I don't have a good connection with that person, it is not comfortable. So this is why um, I focus on my first three lines solid, and the fourth line even a little bit. So because my first three lines below me are, are what where I get my 50, my 250, or my 1500 as we go down and as we build our structure. Um, we still, I still have plenty of builders on my fourth line, fifth line, sixth line, seventh line. I still contact every one of those builders the same way, even if they're not in my first three. Because I want to support the people who are under me who are building for their 250, or 50, 250, or 1500. So it just, it's a continuous process. And like Carrie said, if you don't like people, this isn't a business for you because basically that's what I do every day. It's my job. Um, so I'm going to start with what Teresa Harding said, another quote. Um, me and Carrie both like her, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, she says that we should always be in contact um, in one way or another with every single person on our first three lines. And I heard that when I first started, and I really um, kept doing that. Um, so... I'm going to focus a little bit on the builders first and what I do. Um, I have uh, Lisha's on my front line, so I might pick on her a little bit. <laughs> um, I know she's not too shy, so that's good. Um, and then I have some people on my second and third line here, too, so that's cool. Um, but basically, what I focus on every single day, and I don't do this on the 25th of every month, I do this at the first, and then I do it again you know, maybe on the 15th or sometime toward, and always at the end of the month, because once we're checking our back office and everything's got to line up, I probably talk to everybody just to see how they're doing and how their structure is, and if they need help with closing it out, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, I'm going to just tell you a few things that I do with my frontline builders. I usually speak to them by weekly, almost always, and if it's not speaking to them, it's a text message. Um, and it would be things like... Um, if it's a buy, if it's a for one time during that month, I'm always checking in with what's going on with their family, what's going on with their life, how are their kids. If I know that they're in a, a, a certain circumstance which is really difficult, then 
I'd like to be able to be there for them and let them know that if I, you know, ask them if there's anything I can do. Um, because, and that isn't just, you know, I'm not just writing that, that's just who I am and I would be doing that anyway. So everything I'm sharing is just based on how I do it. Everybody does it different. So um, another thing I'll do is um, I'll ask them if they need any help with classes or events coming up. And I probably do, I would say more than 50% of the classes that my group holds, I probably do with them. And it's because I want a solid structure. It's because I want to continue to have fun with these people. I actually have fun when I'm with my teens. I, um, like to be in their company, I like to hear about their lives, I like us to succeed together, all of those things. So um, when I do classes with them, I feel like um, it's, we're supporting each other. Um, also when it comes to maybe closing a class, because I feel like from experience I've learned how to close a class really well. And I like to teach people how to do that, um, especially when they're new. I'm like, I am very confident that I can help you close your class at a very high percentage. Please have me come and show you how to do that. Um, almost that nobody said no, really. So, um, and uh, I, also, I actually have um, my clothes typed out if anybody's interested, they can ask for it later. But um, it's, you know, it's something that I will always offer to my builders is to help them do a class or teach them how to close a class effectively. Um, let's see. I also ask all the time, we just had this conversation today, Alicia and I, how are the other people on your front line doing? Right, so then I get to know how the people are doing um, that, she's, that she's working with on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And um, we talk about their challenges and their successes. And I think about ways that I can help her support them. Um, and that is what keeps, again, our team solid. Um, but I will say that when I don't do that, I feel the weaknesses. I feel the legs fall out beneath me. I feel like the tripod that's wiggly and wobbly. It is not a good feeling when you're working towards getting your, to your bonuses and you have them solid and then all of a sudden things start getting wiggly and it's because I stepped back. It's because I stopped connecting. It's because I stopped showing up. I don't want a, a business that's not solid. So it's my responsibility if I want to do doTERRA in the fashion that I want to be successful, like Miss Jo over here, uh, <laughs> I have to do the work, and so I'm willing to do that. Um, but I do have a lot of fun along the way. I also think it's really important, and it's my responsibility to teach people about um, like their structure to make sure that they understand where their placement should go. So many times when people, we get all excited and we enroll all these people and they all end up on our front line, or on somebody's front line, and they never get moved in time. So when I know somebody's having a class, I am almost immediately on the phone with them, pretty close after, to find out if they um, knew where to put their people, if they needed help with where to put their people, and to see if I could help them in that way. This is all a part of following up, um, because if these relationships aren't strong, my business isn't strong. So. And because we're primarily business builders or sharers in here, I'm focusing on that. Um, what else here? Okay, so for my second line leaders, some ways I would approach them would be, um, let's see. So on the second line, I have builders, customers, and sharers. So I'm kind of having different conversations with each person. So with my builders, I'm pretty much having the same conversation like I have with Alicia. Um, even at my second line, I'm doing that. Um, I just feel it's important to have a solid relationship with everyone on that line. So I do exactly the same thing I do with my front line. Um, if they are a sharer, this is how I would kind of modify. Um, I still ask how their family is. Um, I maybe would check in, um, maybe I only speak to them once a month instead of, um, or even text message once a month if they're a sharer, depending on where they are. Um, you know, how they're loving the products. Um, you know, if, if they establish themselves as a sharer, then I ask how they're sharing. And I have a Sorry, conversation with them about that. So I have sharers. Some of them like to share at work. Some of them like to share at school. I ask them if they're doing classes. If um, I ask them specifically what kind of support do you need from me as a sharer. Um, because they don't have as much um, experience with teaching a class or closing a class and they're intimidated to have a class. That's why they're a share and not a builder. 
they would rather um, just share maybe with their friends and family that they see every day rather than jump into that. So I do try to support them by offering to do a class for them um, so that it can help them earn share points too. So, um, and I always dive in a little bit deeper as I get to know a person. If I talk to them at least once a month, by the third or fourth month and they're still sharing, then I'm starting to have a conversation about that what they're really doing is building and how can I help them to become successful and I can sometimes, almost always actually, eventually, like Megan for instance, right? There's always, there's people in an organization that if they start out as shares will sometimes come over to the builder side. And so if I have and maintain that relationship, then that is pretty much gonna happen. Um, so I have that, let's see what else. Customers. So for them, I mean, I'm not constantly thanking them for putting in an order, even if it's $5, because it adds to our $600 volume, which we all need if we're trying to get to a bonus. Um, I still ask how their family is. I want to know them personally and what's going on. Um, I might only contact them maybe once a month or once every two months. Um, I do text them always with the new, um, what the uh, product of the month is, or I put it on my Facebook page, which I know that they're on. Um, although Facebook can become like a slippery slope for me because I don't really want to count on that as my primary form of communication with my team. So um, that's something that I have done in the past also, which I find really doesn't work. I really need to either be calling them, having a conversation, meeting them for coffee, and at the very least sending a text um, that's personal because that is what's going to maintain that. I want to make sure that my customers also fully understand what the LRP is because some of them spend $10, but I have many, many, many who still put over 100 PV order in because they want to get the free product. Um, and once they understand the LRP and the shipping points and things like that, um, I have a pretty good rate of, um, of having them order um, once they understand all the perks. Let's see. I also offer my customers samples so that they can share them with their friends and family um, because they don't have a lot of oil themselves and if they do, they don't have the little bottles. And if I want them to be sharers, or then the only way that they're gonna become that is if I offer to supply them with those things. Um, so that's another way that I can stay connected to my customers is I can offer to uh, drop off some Samples and it gives me an opportunity to see them face to face, give them a hug, and it's just another way to connect. So that's sort of, let's see. Okay. So the other thing about building relationships that I found, and Carrie touched on this a little bit, but I believe it wholeheartedly because if you look around this room, there are so many people in this room that are on different teams with different leaders. And I just love that so much because it, we're a really small group, but when you, you think about it on a larger scale, it's like we have so much to learn from each other. And I feel like it's so important for me to build relationships with people outside of my own team. It's just as much as my own team because it gives me such growth opportunity and ways to learn. And um, we get to have great relationships like we have, right? Definitely. And, um, and then I get to bring my little tribe into it. And then everybody, you know, it's just a really good feeling. And what I get from it is I just, I really understand that people and myself need to stay inspired in this business. And what inspires me are the people, um, to watch people succeed, um, to even see them struggle and to be able to be supportive of them. Um, I just, so if I don't have that constant inspiration, I kind of fall down and I kind of get disconnected. So I really, like this is a part of following up, it's showing up. It's like showing up to Joan's Lunch and Learn, showing up to a training, showing up to um, a class that maybe somebody that's not even on your team is holding, but they would really like your support because they think you're strong in that area. You know, why wouldn't I do that? So, but that's what kind of makes doTERRA doTERRA, I think. And, and training that's similar to this right here kind of brings that all together. Um, so, I don't know, I, I find that it's um, invaluable, like I just, um, I learned so many lessons and I just love 
be able to learn and um, from all of you and to be able to teach what I know. So um, what I wanted to do with the rest of my time, which is how much, Gary, about? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention, but Probably maybe like, about, just take what you need. We'll, okay, we'll make it work. Okay, five to ten minutes is um, I would like, because I've been able to do this with Carrie, with Joe, with Kelly and Nikki, people that are on my team that are here, um, to get a different perspective on how they follow up or connect with people and what they find is, is a success for them. And maybe even what you have difficulty in, you just maybe need help from somebody in your little group. I'd like you to get into a group of um, like, let's just say four people, and as soon as I'm done with this exercise, um, we're, I'm going to be introducing Joe. We're going to be flowing into another thing. But I want you to get into a group um, the best that you can with people you don't know, or at least with two people you don't know. And it's going to be a group of four. So I'm just going to um, have you, I'm going to count off, because most of you are sitting by your friends. I think we will be back with part two shortly. Well. So why don't you go first? One, one.
she should go home and rest and drink a lot of water. And Wayne, no, that's not working. My daughter is an excellent athlete. She's a tennis player. She, is, she does everything in a very almost fabulous way. And she was <laughs> not, it was not a good program for me to try to just have her sleep and drink water and have any happiness. It was just really awful. <laughs> Do you remember that, Jeffy? Yeah. I didn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> she was so, oh, so unhappy. <laughs> and they didn't have anything. I'm like, are you kidding me? This, I was not accepting that. I knew. And I felt like, quite honestly, I would go to the ends of the earth if I could find an answer to help my daughter. Have you all been in that, that place? Yeah. Okay. So that's where I come from, is I've got to have answers. And guess what? Doterra came into my life and brought me a lot of answers. Answers for my own health, answers for my kids, my grandkids. And I have to tell you that just something as simple as peppermint is an answer for somebody. Mm -hmm. And so I just get driven by them. If I, I will hear about someone who has a health issue, I'm like, I've got to call them. I've got to get an answer for them. And that's what I'm driven to do. In fact, my, my other daughter, Julie, called me. She said, Mom, my neighbor wants something um, for, she has always digestive problems, just like you. What do you have for her, Mom? I might have her call me. Can I take her something? Can I, where does she live? I'll drop off digestive caps. Whatever it is, I'm like, I'm just, this is my life. Um, and so you have to figure out what this is for you. What drives you? What's your passion? Why are you doing this? Or why are you not doing this? But all along the way, it's really good to know the process. It's really good to know those ranks. And so, uh, you all have this little green paper and it goes through a lot of information about the company. But then on pages four and five, you open it up and it's just like this very beautiful explanation of the rank. Okay, and so this is this is your guide. When I when I started doing doTERRA, I was just all about answers for people and helping people. I didn't pay attention to rank. But one day in the mail, I got a certificate. <laughs> they used to send you a certificate. I don't think they do that anymore. Me too. Yeah, they do. Send you they? Yeah. I have my brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somewhere that, that I need them and they need me. 
or she catered for one of my kids' weddings or something. Or yeah. a baby shower. Baby shower. She did a beautiful job. Yeah, you did wear it. Okay. I'm so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> <really good. laughs> so she fed us perfectly for like two years or something. And all along the way, a miracle happened. She kept learning as she was a little child. <laughs> Okay, so who in here is a goal? 
You got any goals? Because that's where all we're all wanting to head. So why a goal? So I just believe that um, a goal is like the perfect, perfect place to go because here you're making a really a, a good income. At this place, you are replacing another job. So um, it's like three to five thousand a month when your goal. And I think you should just go there. Like I want to quit my other job because lots of people are in dead end jobs. Is anybody here in a dead end job? Oh wait, I'm happy. I shouldn't say that about the Clark County Court. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> After all, it's easy enough to do. Yeah. Like you make so much money there. I'm so happy, right? It's like that's a goal, but not replace my salary though. Yeah. Sorry. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, but like this is this is gonna happen, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I just think that's where we should all head, because that's. That's a place where you can make a house payment, a car payment, mm -hmm. and take yourself on a little trip. And you want to get to that point. That's why we want to get to a goal. So a goal, yeah, it's just like you can make up to, it's kind of like a, a different range in between. People make a different amount, but like three to five thousand dollars. So for a goal, you have to have three premieres. And I don't know, for some of you right now, you're probably like going, like, are you joking me? Is anybody saying that? Like, it just sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Not for Diane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, if you just keep going. Just keep sharing and just keep placing people in the right spot. Okay, so, um, so I just have to tell you that, um, the important thing to do is just have a plan. You just have to decide that that's what you want to be. So um, I brought everybody a gold worksheet. Okay, so everybody take one of these. And then there's one of these for every single rank. And there's a website called Show, Shared Oterra, and you can just Google, um, say you want, to, you want to see what a silver hat what the silver rank requires. Just just Google doTERRA silver rank worksheet or something like that. And Share doTERRA has like something for every question. And so um, I think it's just good to write your name in the top circle. As soon as you get your paper, in the top circle, write your name. This is you. And then this is your three premieres. And then here's your people with 2,000, okay? Can I borrow something? And it's good to just fill in names. Can I borrow something? Yeah. Oh, you're from here. And you just look at who's on your team right now just write her name and right how now. everything and is working. And this is what got me to Diamond. This is what got me to Blue Diamond. And I wrote my name at the top. And then I looked at it very carefully and I plugged in the names of my leaders. And then I saw what I had to do. I went my back office. I reviewed everything that was happening there. I had one way that I had to work really hard on. And so I had to have um, five goals to be a couple of dollars. And there was one leg that was just really slow. Anyway, so I took all my focus every day. Every week, I was planning something with that lake. We had classes, we had meetings, we had um, parties. We did everything, I did everything I could for, for about four or five months, all I could do was to that lake. And so I, I just knew the process. I'm like, this person, this person, this person, everybody kind of was going to kind of work and doing good, except for this lake. So I had a conversation with that person. And I said, what can we do to get you a goal? And I got her on board, and we worked together, and it happened. It was amazing. But it was just that planning, that working, those meetings. You have to, so there's nothing about this, this job of doTERRA or gift of doTERRA that doesn't involve work and your heart. That's just the fact. So if right now you're in a position where you have another job, you're a teacher, or you're doing something else at this moment, 
you just keep plugging along. And you have your structure, you know what you want, and then you talk to your people. So how many of you in here have a trip line? So a trip line. Okay. So some of you are just starting. Um, it took me almost a year to build my trip line. So it's okay to take time. I was when I was doing this, I had another job. I was an art teacher at a private school. And I just, on my, in my spare time, I would keep sharing and keep my work with people. And I would sit across the table at lunch with the teacher who had the zero, and every single day I'd be like, tell her what works for you. And I would think in my head, oh, she'll be mad at me. She'll think I'm so annoying. So it took me a couple months to get up the courage to say, I have something that will help your zero. She's like, what? Tell me what right now. Because I can't do this anymore. I can't, I have this, I have this issue with my skin for so many years, and the her skin was so red and so rashy and so itchy, it was like upper arms, upper face. It was a terrible situation for her. And so I was a chicken, I had that, and then like the day I finally asked her, she was like a happy day. So how many of you are right now in your head or when you're thinking about talking to someone about people are making up reasons why it's a bad idea? Raise your hand. Okay, so what are your reasons? I'm a, what's your reason? And I'm going to annoy them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Yes? Okay, I, I'm just going to put it out there, but so Tara is kind of expensive. And so, mm -hmm. you know, talking to people that I know that they lost their job or they don't have the money. And so I share, but I just, I feel bad because I'm like, okay, I know I'm in it where I can earn my free product. And I let them know about that, but I just feel bad. And so I, it's, so you hold back. You're worried. Yeah. We all make assumptions, right? Yeah. We make these stupid assumptions. Let me tell you something. It's, it's kind of rare that people blow you off. People can tell that you're seriously wanting to help them. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, like when, when, it, when it comes to medical care or health care, like you have to pay co-pays, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to pay for medication, you have to take off work. There's all these reasons why going to a doctor isn't really a good solution, is it? Mm -hmm. Because my friend across the table, lunch table had been to every skin specialist in the state of Nevada. And you know what worked for her? Was a cleanse. She did, she did cleanses and she did all these, um, she had a, a, a total cleanse and she got a life on vitality and her skin cleared up and her skin's been perfect ever since. And so I just have to tell you that you, sometimes you are the answer. Mm -hmm. You have the answer. And sometimes you're like, okay, I don't even know what to do with skin. You might say that to yourself. And then you get that little app on your phone like the, what's it called? Modern Essentials. Essentials. How many of you have the Modern Essentials app on your phone? If you don't have it, get it right now. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Modern Essentials. Because all you do is type in eczema and it will give you like a whole list of every, everything possible that you can do for someone with eczema. And it is an internal issue. You have to do cleanses and you have to work through your gut. That's scary. Probiotics and I cleanse. No, it's just about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, we have these awesome probiotics. So all you have to do is stand and say, I have answers. And it's really rude of me if I don't share my answers. And if you approach people in just like not a pushy way, but an informational way, in a caring way, then they're going to like your answer. Okay, so my friend has spent probably thousands of dollars going to doctors that have no answer for her eczema. I, I honestly don't know how uh, dermatologists stay in business mm -hmm. because I don't think they always have an answer. They give you all these medications that give you some other disease, right? She still doesn't have pigment. She took soft Paracrine three years ago and she's still missing white pigment on her skin where the Paracrine has stained for really? years. Okay, see, there's, so once people get um, some 
let's hear it from your wife. They they don't think it costs that much anymore mm -hmm. because having an answer has like the most important value. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how you build a goal: is you notice people, you care about people, and you talk to people. Is there anybody in here that can't do that? Okay, so you have to let go of all your excuses. Right on your paper, I have no excuses. I have answers. And then it's really good to come to lunch with us. And it's really good to be educated. So that you do have answers like this. Yeah, you're like, I went to this class and I found out about skin problems. I went to this class and I found out about heart. And I, I basically have like four years of lunch room classes where there's topic after topic after topic where we just keep finding information that helps and blesses the lives of other people. And then you feel like an expert. You have expertise to share with people. And if you don't automatically have the answer, you get the modern central path. Um, just the other night, I, someone asked me, okay, so what do you do for high cholesterol? And I wasn't sure it didn't come to the top of my head. I just looked at my app, I copied it, pasted it, and sent them a text. And it's okay how we get those oils. And I'm, so that's the perfect pathway, mm -hmm. is to give them some answers. And um, so I just, I think that if you can see this in a different light, <laughs> other than this is hard, I can't talk to people, I, I, I don't want to annoy people, I don't want to um, embarrass myself, I you just have to turn that all around mm -hmm. and turn this into the gift of answers for people. And just not be afraid to talk to people. Um, sometimes we get in this rut and we need to come to a class. We need to show up. We need to be with other people who don't give up. And I believe that um, that's why I got to where I am. It's because I just said I'm just never giving up. I just don't want to give up. I just love this too much. Um, and then I want to tell you about aroma touch. So actually what I want you to do is just take your um, build guide and go through it, just every page, just look through it until you're very strong with this information and you have a plan for yourself, okay? So now I want to talk to you about aroma touch. So when I started out in doTERRA, I was very timid. All I knew is that I loved it and I had a passion for it and I wanted to do it. And the first thing, the first opportunity I had to become to, to learn aroma touch, I thought, I'm not real comfortable touching other people's body. So it took me another year to decide that I could do that. And then the next opportunity that came up, I took the aroma touch training. And um, I fell in love with it. I felt like it was another important answer that I had to have to help people. And I, I kept getting aroma touches, so I found that as I served people with uh, aroma touches, that I was able to have special time with them. It takes an hour or so, maybe even longer, to, to do an aroma touch on people. And so in that time, you kind of have, you get into a connection. And you're able to talk about things because it opens up that energy. So um, I, I had lots of people that came to have a moment touch because they were looking for an answer. Many times in desperate situations where they did get relief. And it was just astounding to watch that happen. And because they had relief and they felt like this was an answer for them, they did make goals. So it became a way to build my business. So all along the way, I was meeting people who had um, some desperate situations. And just like the eczema, there are people who couldn't find answers through a doctor, or they couldn't find answers through other places. So one of the most memorable ones was uh, a 17-year-old girl who had anorexia lumia, and her family had taken her all the way to New York to a very special hospital where they were working with her. And then their insurance ran out and they had to bring her home. And then the hospital said, well, we don't think you should take her out because she's suicidal. And 
at the mom happened to know me and knew that I did a room touch. She she gave me a call. She said, "We're very scared. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn, but we know that you have some things that we can help her with." So they actually just got her off the plane, and brought her to my house to do a room touch. And I just knew that that was the answer. I don't know why. I just felt like it was an answer for that that sweet girl. And I promised her I'd give her a room touch every day if that's what it took to help her feel well and decide to live. And I, that's what we did. They brought her back to my house every day for at least three weeks for an aroma touch. And she got well. And she got married. And she has a child. And I'm not saying that aroma touch was like the only answer because I think there's lots of things. I think that God had a plan. But that just was really solid in my mind that I have a gift that I can offer that is rare. And every time I have a chance to share a room touch, I do it. And I love that um, it, the time came along for me to be an aroma touch trainer. And I just knew that that was the right thing for me. So now I get to help other people have that same thing. And if you haven't had aroma touch training, you need to have it right away. And I have a talk on October 20th. And um, raise your hand if you have a little touch training. Okay, so lots of you have it. And how many of you are, are getting a little touch in? Okay, so the, this next aroma touch training that I'm giving is also going to be a refresher. Because maybe some of you haven't been practicing up and you just need to give one or have one. So it's going to be this, I, I see it as this big day, this big, happy, exciting day where everybody gets an aroma touch and gives their aroma touch. And it just gets us jump started in this powerful energy of helping and being a blessing in people's lives. And so I believe that all this whole time, this every single day of this path to the endoterra, it was meant for me to have um, the right personal development. And when I started, I was timid. I didn't think I could do any of this stuff. And now I have the power in my hand to give it a little touch to help me change a life. And I have to tell you right now, I give a little touch every week to my friend Allie this year. I don't know if you know her, but she had cervical cancer three times. And now she has it again, and it's not going well. And she has to have her um, her cancer has kind of like attached to her hip, and they, I'm not sure they can do anything about it now. So she has to have her kidneys drained. She has to have a drain in her kidney in order for her to survive. So you know what, there's sometimes, there's circumstances where you can do nothing. You don't feel like you have anything that you can give or anything you can offer. But once a week she comes and she has a home touch. And it lifts her up and it helps her get through to the next week. So I want you to know that I never make one penny off of a home touch. I have, I have not done it for that reason, but you can. If you have a license to touch, you can charge up to $100, whatever it is your gone rate is, to get a home touch. I just feel like it's a gift. And I believe that my success has come because I have used my heart and my hands to be a blessing to other people. So that's why I look back and I say, how did that happen? How did I get to be where I am? And I guarantee you that as you put your heart and your hands into this work of serving other people, you will you will stop thinking. You'll stop giving yourself those reasons, those excuses. You'll say, I have a gift, and I'm willing to open my mouth and share it. And then just be patient with this process. 
Be patient because the right people come to you. You find them and they find you because of your heart. So there's lots of ways to do doTERRA. Now you might be a lot more business minded than me. And congratulations to you if you are. If you are a great businesswoman, that really matters. But then just add this first. And be willing to give and serve. And talk to that person across the table. Or talk to that person in that airplane. Or wherever you're at. Just be a light and, and be a service in this world. So I think that's my message, is that doTERRA has the tools. It has the healing tools. <laughs> It has the right products at the right time, at the right, like in the history of the world, there's just never been so many precious gifts of the earth and oil available to the masses like they are right now because of doTERRA. doTERRA came along at the perfect time. And it has been a blessing in my life. And I bet you all feel very confident that these oils and products are good they are helpful, they are, they make a difference. People see and feel the difference. And so you can feel confident that you have the right product to share. And I think that's all it is, is you turn your fear or your anxiety about sharing into this power that you have to share with somebody else. And I hope that you'll just go away with this new energy or this new thought process, belief system, about what the tools are in your hands and that you're the right person to share it. And sometimes, I catch myself sometimes thinking, but there's all things no Tara at Rose Advocates everywhere I turn. I know them all. They come to my house for lunch and learn. There's thousands and millions of them. And I can say to myself, how, if there's so many out there, how can I do, how can I still do this? Does anybody think that? Do you think that the market, there's like, it's all closed up and there's nobody left to talk to? Well, that's just not true. There are lots of advocates. There are lots of material people. But your energy is going to match up with someone else's. It's, it's going to fit perfectly. And I have, but the one thing I have to tell you is if you don't talk to them, some other role advocate will. And so you, that means you have to be out there with that conversation and the belief system that you're the right person and you'll have the right product to help you. So even today, I got like two or three phone calls from people I've connected from, connected with, and I always make sure people have my cell phone in their home. And if they have a question, they call me directly. It doesn't matter how big or how far I go in doTERRA, which I hope I keep going forever. I want people to call me directly and ask me questions. If they want to have a question about the compensation plan or a product or an answer for somebody, I want them to call me. So I have a lady that called me right here while we're planning for this meeting. And she had an order for six months. And she would, had been moving, her life had been chaos, and she called me. She's like, Joan, how do I reactivate my account? How do I get this, and what do you recommend for that? So it's been like a year and a half since we talked. I want you to be the person that people reach out to. Give everybody your number, because you're the one with the answer, okay? Nobody else, sometimes it's even like my downline, um, and other people have enrolled now. They just know that I'm willing to be the one with the answers and to help them through it. So just be that person, okay? Stand up, be a leader, and be um, a heartfelt person with answers. So does anybody have any questions about how to build this business? Or Because I know that this compensation plan will work for you. You know it, you plug it in, and you talk to so I just think that they were just going to walk away from here feeling real strong about the possibilities from here. Okay, and you can all take my number, 702-265-7530. And I like to answer people's questions. And I like to make your tarot work for you. Okay, so that's it. Who comes up next?
We were going to do the exercise, but we're not now. Okay, so we are just about done. We were going to see if there's any questions. Nobody else has any other questions? 